welcome to Good Game Pocket Edition, your compacted gaming bite-sized piece of gamage for the week. I'm Banjo. And I'm Hex. I'd say this week has been pretty, pretty super, wouldn't you say, Banjo? I would say it has been bat-tastic, Hex, all thanks to Injustice, Gods Among Us. <laughs> Right in the belfry! We'll punch it out over that at the end of the show. First up, though, some roundup reviews, starting with Tryon World's latest MMO, Defiance. This game is designed to cross over with a live action sci fi TV series, also called Defiance, but you don't really need to watch the show to enjoy the game. You play the role of an Ark Hunter, scouring the land for valuable alien relics. Sometimes these fall to Earth in special action events called Ark Falls, where players pile it on to fight back alien hordes and plunder for loot, which makes for some big pew pew action set pieces. I would say though that for an MMO, this does feel a lot more like a, a shooter than an RPG. Yeah, I, I was excited to jump into a brand new sci-fi world, although I did find the character customization to be a bit lacklustre. And while I think the shooting is okay for an MMO, it's not amazing, and there isn't a cover system or anything really to set it apart. I also found the world itself a bit bland and samey. It just didn't really inspire me to explore it that much. And it's hard coming to something like this after Guild Wars, for example. Sorry about that, friend. But I did find the four-player co-op maps were probably the best and really quite fun. And there's also the Shadow Wars, which is a 64-a-side conquest mode that takes place on the main world map. They're pretty straightforward and basic, but I'm glad they included them. MMO launches are never smooth, but I do think this has potential, and it's one of the few MMOs that's also on console, which is a pretty big deal, so I gave it six and a half. Yeah, there's a lot you can pick and criticise about this game, but there is a there is a joy into just riding about and gearing up and shooting stuff, so I gave it seven out of ten. Now, onto an Xbox Live arcade game from the makers of Castle Crashes. Battle Block Theatre sees you stranded on an island, and your number one priority is to escape and save your friends. There's been a lot of hardcore platformers like this in recent times, but Battle Block Theatre is definitely one of the most polished in terms of its level design and pixel-perfect controls. It's a surreal platformer that's especially fun when played cooperatively. The levels themselves are quite straightforward to begin with, but very quickly they progress to these crazy layouts filled with spikes, lasers, ice, sludge, and exploding blocks, and they're a great test of your puzzle-solving and jumping skills. The use of so many mid-level checkpoints balances out the repeated deaths, and it never becomes an exercise in frustration. This game's got style. I gave it 9 out of 10. I had a massive smile on my face the entire time I was playing this. There's so many laugh out loud moments. It's just a brilliantly addictive and snappy platformer, so I gave it 9 as well. Okay, we also had a look at another HD remaster this week, and this time it was Microsoft Studios' classic strategy game, Age of Empires 2. Age of Empires 2 HD Edition takes the Age of Kings and pumps it up to higher resolutions with widescreen and multi-monitor support, rejigged multiplayer and Steam Workshop support for user-generated content. Based on actual historical events, you'll be building towns, generating armies and battling it to the death with other civilizations. There are some nicer textures, but aside from the basics of getting this to display nicely on a modern PC, the original AoE 2 remains untouched and it just feels old. Yeah, I think if you have a keen interest in world history, the single player campaign is quite enjoyable. It'll have you playing through the histories of Attila the Hun to Joan of Arc, through a series of scenarios transitioned with small storytelling sequences. The sword death is by now an old companion, but for Jean, we will face it again. But yes, I think RTS games have evolved way beyond what's on offer here, so you'd really only play this for the nostalgia or for a kind of my first RTS experience. Yeah, I enjoyed the return of the multiplayer side of things, but no, this is a 6 out of 10 for me. I gave it 7. Now, you ready to delve into some emails at the Ask Good Game desk? I am Hex. Let's delve. Let's delve away. Good game! Okay, it's question time now, and this week we've got this one from Mick in Fremantle, Western Australia. What ever happened to the LucasArts style of point-and-click games? I've been hoping that they'll come back now with touchscreen tablets, but most of the retro titles need emulators still. Any goss on the grapevine? Yeah, sad to say, Mick, but it has been a bit of a neglected genre for some time now, but I think things are actually looking up for them. With the huge success that Telltale had with their Walking Dead adventure game, I suspect we'll start seeing a few more games that make use of that classic point-and-click style. Yeah, and when the first episode of The Walking Dead game came out, I didn't really like it that much because there wasn't much game in it, but once you started getting to episode 2 and 3 and 4, it really started to reveal how those choices you made played out, and it, yeah, it's pretty good. It will make you cry, which is almost the opposite of what LucasArts style was, which was 
was very much based in humour. Uh, there was also that massive crowdfunding support that Tim Schafer got for his new point-and-click adventure game, Broken Age. And as I'm sure you know, Mick, Mr. Schaefer was one of the main maestros of those old LucasArts games. And if that does well, then we'll probably find more publishers embrace the beloved point and clicker. I also heard recently that some of the guys behind the classic Neverhood game are back together and making a new game. Apparently it's not a sequel to the Neverhood, but if it's anything like it, then I think that'll be one to look out for as well. <laughs> And just in case you missed them, there's been a few recent games you'd probably enjoy that lean heavily on that point-and-click mechanic, like uh, Machinarium, Botanicula, and Deponia, amongst others. Right, I think we should get into some of our viewer reviews with You Review. Well, seeing as we were talking about Walking Dead before, how about we get some feedback on its not-so-great FPS, Survival Instinct? Excellent idea. And not surprisingly, the general consensus is that it's not very good. I rang the alarms, calling in the abomination. And Diggs the Bunny had this to say. An OK game, definitely not worth the $70 recommended retail price, though. Expected a Dead Island type game, but was disappointed with Survival Instinct. Poor selection of weapons, and gameplay is pretty horrendous. Fans of the show will enjoy, but still, play the Telltale game over this any day. Four stars. Yes, I think this is a budget bin buy at best, or you could always go for the PC version, which is a bit cheaper. And of course, uh, we couldn't uh, do you review without the obligatory review without playing critique, which this week comes from Shinigami. This looks poopy. Five stars. Meanwhile, Meep here was clearly unimpressed with the gameplay, but overall must have liked it, saying, I've seen better gameplay from a potato playing MK. Eight and a half stars. But a few of you seem to disagree with the naysayers. Zach says this game was epic, huge fan of the comics, TV series, and the other game by Telltale. This game was just an all-round awesome game. 10 out of 10. Well, there you go. Different strokes for different folks, I guess, Hex. Indeed, and uh, he wasn't alone. JM71549 adds, Bull crap, this game is the best. 10 out of 10. Well, glad you guys are enjoying it. But on that note, we're out of time for this week, so back to the studio. Good game. What happens when you gritty up the toughest superheroes and villains from the DC universe and put them in a room? This. a modern, gritty and dark fighter, from the look of each character to the backdrops to the more technical fighting mechanics. This game is set far apart from the likes of Capcom fighters or even MK vs DC. Yeah, but let's talk about the fighting. Begin. There's some interesting mechanics and layers of strategy here. If you've come from Mortal Kombat, then there's a few things to get used to, like there's no block button, you simply hold back, and also one of the face buttons is assigned to a specific superhero power, and you're used to that being a kick, and that took me ages to get used to. But once you get past that, you can start chaining combos and juggling enemies in the air, and it gets pretty intense. There are some excellent ideas, such as how you're encouraged to do a special move straight after a combo for a bonus. And after a while, you start to get a good sense of all the telegraphing of each character's abilities. I think they nailed most of the special moves though, because if you miss, there's a decent window of opportunity left for someone to take advantage of your mistake. There is very little room for error though. I mean, I couldn't even get some of those combos out in time in the tutorial, especially those bounces. Yeah, me neither. And I, I did struggle with the Xbox 360 D-pad a little bit, and I had to go to PS3 version. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to remember here, but there's some really deep combat ideas which will beckon the pro players, I think. The wager mechanic, for example, lets you pit a certain amount of your super bar against your enemies, and it can drastically turn the tide of battle. Along with a few charged abilities, you can also modify your super moves by giving up a bar of your super gauge. And this is fantastic because it, it's unpredictable and it can change a combo in a really interesting way. But if you fill up your super bar, you can unleash a giant special attack. They're glorious! <laughs> I love how the Flash just goes for a run around the Earth and comes back. Just gives a bit of a run-up for that. 
they can be dodged if you know the character well enough. For example, Joker's pie in the face can be ducked, so it's worth trying to activate it when your enemy is in the air or falling from an uppercut to make sure it lands. On top of all that, the backgrounds crumble and fall apart as you fight, and it all feels very dynamic and superhero-y. I love how environmental these fights are. I mean, when I think about the best fight choreography from, you know, good action movies, they're the ones that use aspects of the environment around them. And that's what this felt like, and it's so cool. Yeah, it is so exciting, isn't it? And especially because you forget that it's there sometimes until someone throws a car at you. <laughs> <laughs> On top of all that, if you're near a wall, you can sometimes do a special kick to send your enemy to another location, and they get pretty smacked up along the way. They've just gone all out on these. The transitions are amazing. I mean, they've come a pretty long way from punching someone from a subway up to a rooftop in Mortal Kombat. Yeah. I had a fantastic time with this game. At first, I didn't know how to feel about it because it did feel so different to MK versus DC, but then I started to just see all those different layers of strategy and wanted to get better at them. So I gave it 9 out of 10 rubber chickens. I will say it's weird how they all get up after being knocked down only to fall over again. And there was no handicap options that we could find for multiplayer, which is a bit of a shame. But this is a top fighter with some killer spectator modes in online, such as King of the Hill. So uh, I gave it 8 out of 10. Good game. Well, that's another episode of Pocket Packed Away, but join us at 8.30 p.m. on Tuesday night for a full-length episode of Good Game, where we'll be going boldly into space with a new Star Trek game. Let's go get our damn ship back. And we also have a look at the cooperative shenanigans of Dead Island Riptide. Until then, barge you out. Hex out. Who's your favourite Star Trek captain? You know, she gets a bad rap, but I'd say Janeway. She's Janeway, cool. Janeway, she is pretty cool. She felt like she felt like my grandmother. You know, if you not because she's old, but like I felt like. She's but nice. if you see interviews with that actress, she is just Janeway. Like I think she is just a captain of life because yeah. she is just so much like her character. I mean, obviously Picard's the best, but you know, for the sake of this argument, we will say Janeway was that. pretty good. You asked as me well. who my favourite was, not yeah. who the best was. Wow.